In this video I'm going to teach you the yogic technique of Mahabandha, which is a technique you need to perform before awakening Kundalini, because Mahabandha dissolves energetic knots in the body, where Kundalini otherwise could get stuck and cause physical as well as mental problems, sometimes resembling a full-blown psychosis. To prevent such problems from happening to you, I will teach you the three components of Mahabandha in great detail and in a step-by-step -step manner, so you could go from beginner to master of this important technique. And thus this video will be your definitive guide for learning how to do Mahabandha and dissolving the knots. Mahabandha is also known as the Great Lock. This is because Maha means great in English and Banda means lock in English. The practical meaning of this is that Mahabandha locks energy at specific regions in the body and there dissolves energetic knots to prepare for a safe Kundalini awakening. But more of this later in the video. The locking of energy is accomplished by certain contractions of the body and these contractions are achieved by performing the three bandhas of Mula Bandha, Udhijana Bandha and Jalandhara Bandha. Together they become Mahabandha, the Great Lock. Before I proceed to demonstrate these three bandhas in detail, you first need to grasp certain concepts in order to understand what is occurring in your body when you are doing those bandhas. First of all, as I mentioned in a previous video, you have a pranic body, an energy body, which is not separate from your physical body, but is just a finer, more subtle sheet of it. And any changes made to this pranic body will have a corresponding effect on your physical body and vice versa. In the pranic body you have nadis and chakras. Nadis are energy channels and chakras are energy vortexes where many nadis meet. And when you perform the bandhas, you stimulate the chakras by concentrating or locking in energies around the chakras. However, what is more important in the beginning of your yogic practice is that this locking in of energies also dissolves certain knots, otherwise obstructing the energy flow. You might wonder what these knots are. Well, inside of the pranic body you have three grantis or knots in English. And these knots negatively affect the free flow of energy, particularly for the chakras. When you perform the bandhas, either separately or all at once, the energies you lock in gradually eats away at the knots and eventually dissolves them completely after many times of performing the bandhas. Now while energy can still flow in your pranic body with the knots intact, if it could not, you would be quite dead because the pranic body needs energy to function. But the flow is somewhat abstracted and not as free as when these knots are dissolved. A free flowing efficient stream of energy is really what you would want in your pranic body in order for it and your physical body in turn to function optimally. That nothing abstracts this stream of energy is even more crucial when Kundalini awakens. Now if you haven't heard of Kundalini before I can reveal that Kundalini is a powerful energy originally laying at the base of your spine like a coiled sleeping serpent and which when awakened rises up through your body and greatly assists towards your enlightenment. However, since Kundalini is such a massive amount of energy it is easy for it to get stuck at an intersection of nadis, we'll say at a chakra if there is a knot abstracting the free flow. Thus this massive amount of stuck Kundalini energy would instead work contrary to your spiritual development 
and not only allow even less energy than before to get through, but would also cause problems in the corresponding part of your physical body. Sooner or later, this higher concentration of stuck energy would affect your mind as well, especially if Kundalini gets stuck at one of the higher chakras, and could cause a so-called Kundalini syndrome with similar symptoms as a psychosis. Now, while it is true that a Kundalini awakening can by itself dissolve the knots as Kundalini rises up through your body, but this is not at all certain, and Kundalini is more likely to get stuck at a knot as mentioned. You should therefore avoid a premature awakening of Kundalini at all cost by never beginning to work directly with this powerful energy before you have first dissolved all of the knots. Your spiritual development is not something you should leave to chance, but you should always progress gradually in a steady manner towards enlightenment and never take any unnecessary risks such as awakening Kundalini before you have dissolved the knots. Let us now begin with Mula Banda, the root lock. You perform this Banda by contracting an area in the perineum called the perineal body, which is situated between the anus and the genitals. When contracting this area, you not only stimulate the root chakra of Muladhara chakra, but you also begin to dissolve the knot of Brahma Granti by locking in energy around this location. The Brahma Granti is located at the lower region of your pranic body and especially obstructs the free energy flow for the lower chakras of Muladhara chakra and Swadhisthana chakra. Now if you're having trouble understanding how to contract the perineal body of the perineum, I can provide the following advice. The perineal body is flanked at the rear by the muscles of the anus, which you for example contract when trying to hold back gas. And at the front, the perineal body is flanked by the genital muscles, which you for example contract when trying to hold back urine or to stop the flow of urine while urinating. To contract the perineal body, you can actually contract all of these surrounding muscles as if you're trying to hold back gas and urine at the same time, and that will automatically contract the perineal body as well. Even just contracting the anus muscles is usually enough for a beginner to automatically have the muscles of the perineal body contracted also, since these muscles are all situated so close to each other. Contracting the surrounding muscles is thus a neat beginner's trick to apply when learning Mula Banda. Know that with dedicated practice over a longer period of time, you will be better able to identify the muscles of the perineal body and be able to initialize the contraction of the perineal body without first focusing on contracting the muscles of the anus and or genitals. Now to get a mental feel for the perineal body, you can sit in meditation and concentrate your mind on this area. And then after a while, you can try to contract the muscles of this area physically. To get a more physical feel of the perineal body, you can also perform Siddhasana, which is an asana where you place the heel of one foot pressing against the perineal body of the perineum, and thus usually intend to stimulate the Muladhara chakra with this pressure. And I will now demonstrate Siddhasana. Now for Siddhasana. You can first have the legs stretched out in front of you. Then you just tilt the left leg a little to the side, bring it inwards, place the heel against the perineum. Then you tilt the right leg, bring it inwards, and you place the right foot on top of the left foot. Then you tuck in the front part of the right foot between the calf and thigh of the left leg, like this. 
and you have the heel of the right foot pressing against the pubic region just above the genitals. Then you make a space between the calf and thigh of the right leg and you bring up the toes of the left foot like this. Now you are sitting in Siddhasana. For a long demonstration, you may watch my video dedicated specifically to Siddhasana, and which you may find by clicking up here. When pressing the heel against the perineal body while sitting in Siddhasana, I can also say that it is easier to do this when you wear no clues and the connection between the heel and the perineal body is thus not being restricted by any fabric. Doing Siddhasana is a good practice for learning Mula Bandha, since the pressure from the heel provides a feeling for the area you should contract when doing Mula Bandha. You can actually perform Mula Bandha while sitting in Siddhasana and contract the perineal body while your heel is pressing against it. However, you should not rely only on Siddhasana when practicing Mula Bandha and you should vary your practice by doing it both with and without the heel. For example, first meditating in Siddhasana for a while and then removing the heel to contract the perineal body without the extra stimulation from the heel. Now to learn Mula Bandha faster and to really become a master of it, you should train for it not only while practicing yoga formally, but also throughout your daily life. For example, contracting the muscles of the perineal body when sitting in front of the computer, or when sitting on the toilet, or while standing up talking on the phone, or standing up cooking food, and you can even practice it when laying down, such as in bed. Well, as you can hear, you should train for Mula Bandha just about whenever you can find the time. Keep in mind that when first beginning your training of this mudra, you may not be able to hold the perineal body contracted for more than a short while, before its muscles become too tired and you are forced to release them. But with dedicated practice, you will gradually be able to hold them contracted for longer durations of time without difficulty. It is therefore important that you, whenever you can find the time, practice contracting and then holding the muscles of the perineal body contracted for as long as you can, before releasing them, and then starting over with holding them contracted again after having rested them shortly. When practicing for Mula Bandha in your daily life like this, you can at times breathe normally while holding the muscles of the perineal body contracted. But you should also practice this contraction while holding your breath. And especially while holding your breath after exhalation. Because you will later do Mula Bandha as part of Maha Bandha after exhalation. Now let us move along to Udhijana Bandha, the abdominal lock. This Bandha involves drawing in your abdomen completely and making you look a little like a skeleton with your ribcage accentuated. You perform Udhijana Bandha preferably while sitting in Siddhasana or Padmasana. But you can also perform it while sitting in any pose where your spine is straight and your hands are on the knees. You can tilt forward slightly with your body when drawing in the abdomen, as long as you keep your spine straight. And you may also slightly pull up your shoulders while you hold your abdomen drawn in. Remember to never perform Udhijana Bandha right after eating, and instead wait several hours after eating before performing it especially if you have had a large meal. Do also not drink any liquid right before performing this bandha. In addition, if you are female, 
I can add that you should obviously never perform Udijana Banda while you are pregnant and never while you are having your period either. I can also add, and this applies to both male and female, that if you have a medical condition affecting your stomach or if your blood pressure is unhealthy, you should consult a doctor before performing Udijana Banda. That actually holds true for all yoga practice as well and you should always consult a doctor if you have an injury or a medical condition directly affected by a specific yogic movement. Now let me reveal that the knot which is gradually dissolved by Udijana Banda is named Vishnu Granti. This is a knot situated in the middle region of your pranic body and especially obstructing the energy flow for the middle chakras of Manipura chakra and Anahata chakra. I will now demonstrate how to perform Udijana Banda. Now before you perform Udijana Banda you can first take a deep breath or a few deep breaths. Then you perform this Banda after having entirely breathed out all air from your lungs. Next you draw in your abdomen completely and slightly upwards. You hold the abdomen drawn in until you need to breathe again. And then you just release the abdomen and allowing it to expand as you slowly breathe in again. In the beginning it could prove tricky to completely draw in the abdomen, but sometimes it helps to focus on drawing the navel inwards towards the spine and slightly upwards, thereby drawing the whole of the abdomen inwards together with the navel. It is also often easier to learn to draw in the abdomen while standing up and leaning forward with your hands on the knees. You may just train in that manner to faster learn how to draw in the abdomen. You do this after exhalation, the same way as when sitting. And I will now demonstrate this standing training pose. I will now proceed to Jalandhara Banda, the truth lock. This Banda contracts the truth and is performed by slowly turning your head downwards so the shin touches the chest or specifically making the shin touch the upper part of the breastbone and rest there. However, turning the head in this manner so the shin touches the breastbone might be tough at first and you should never force the head and shin down. It is thus sufficient in the beginning when learning this banda to nearly touch the breastbone with the shin. With time and practice your neck muscles will gradually adjust to this movement enabling you to lower the head without much difficulty and resting the shin at the breastbone. Make sure to not wear any clothes 
on the upper part of your body that could prevent the shin from touching the breastbone. Jalandhara Banda dissolves the knot of Rudra Granti, which is situated in the upper region of your pranic body, and especially abstracts the free energy flow for the upper chakras of Vishuddhi Chakra, Agna Chakra and Sahasrara Chakra. The same as with Udhijana Banda, you can perform Jalandhara Banda, preferably while sitting in Siddhasana or Padmasana. But Jalandhara Banda may also be performed while sitting in any pose where your spine is straight and your hands are on the knees. You perform Jalandhara Banda like this. When performing Jalandhara Banda, you should tuck in the chin slightly, then lower the head down slowly as you breathe out. And when you have breathed out all air from your lungs, you rest the chin against the breastbone. You could also pull up the chest slightly to meet the chin. And also slightly pull up the shoulders. Then when you feel the need to breathe in, you slowly turn the head upwards again as you slowly breathe in. Before demonstrating Mahabanda, let me just emphasize that you should first familiarize yourself with these individual components by performing them separately for some time. This is important because you need to gradually accustom your body to concentrations of energies being locked in before you proceed to lock in energies at several regions at the same time, which is more demanding for the body. However, as soon as you have accustomed your body and feel ready, you should perform Mahabanda instead, since this is all the more effective in dissolving the knots. You would still usually have to perform Mahabanda many many times to completely dissolve the knots, but if you would only perform the banda separately, it would take an even longer time. Note that you should always breathe through your nose and never through your mouth when performing Mahabanda. Also remember to wait many hours after eating before performing it, so you have no food waiting to be digested in your stomach. I can also say that you may do Mahabanda with closed or open eyes. And later in your practice, you can even combine it with mudras involving the eyes, such as Nasikagra mudra. But more of such mudras in future videos. And for now, just do Mahabanda without them. Now to perform Mahabanda, you do so while sitting upright in Siddhasana. And you could first take one or a few deep breaths before you perform the three bandas of Mahabanda after an exhalation, where you breathe out all air from the lungs completely. I will now demonstrate how to perform Mahabanda. The correct order of procedure for its three bandas is that you first lower your head slowly for Jalandhara Banda, as you slowly breathe out all air from the lungs completely. Then you draw in the abdomen in Udhijana Banda, and finally you contract the perineal body for Mula Banda. You hold these three bandas for as long as you comfortably can hold your breath, before releasing them in the opposite order, we'll say, first release Mula Banda and Udhijana Banda, 
Then slowly turn your head upwards to release Yalandara Banda as you breathe in again. While I have now described the three main components of Mahabanda, there is actually another yogic technique that is so important to perform together with Mahabanda that this technique could be referred to as the fourth inofficial component of Mahabanda. This yogic technique is called Kachari Mudra and you perform this mudra by rolling your tongue back in the mouth and up into the nasal cavity, like this. Kachari Mudra greatly assists in dissolving the Rudra Gravanti. By helping with locking in the energies even tighter in the upper region of the pranic body, thereby causing the locked in energies to put a greater pressure on the Rudra Garanti and thus dissolving it faster. If you have not achieved Kachari Mudra quite yet, you can certainly perform Mahabanda without it and still dissolve the knots. However, as Kachari Mudra assists in faster dissolving the Rudra Garanti, you should definitely add this Mudra if you can. And you may check out my video on how I achieved it in 14 days for more instructions on how to achieve this mudra. This video you can find by clicking up here. Now, the specific details for Kachari Mudra when doing Mahabanda is that you should always keep your tongue inside of the nasal cavity while breathing in and out through your nose. But when you actually perform Mahabanda once you have breathed out all air from the lungs, you should proceed with pressing the tongue flat against the roof of the nasal cavity to completely seal off any air from accidentally leaking in through the nose. You press the tongue like this for as long as you hold Mahabanda in your breath. Then you stop pressing the tongue against the roof of the nasal cavity when it is time to breathe in again. But still keeping the tongue inside the nasal cavity as you breathe in through the nose. If you wonder when exactly to start pressing with your tongue against the roof of the nasal cavity when doing Mahabanda, I can reveal that you should start pressing just before you do the abdominal lock of Udhijana Banda when beginning Mahabanda and then when you later end Mahabanda you should stop pressing with your tongue against the roof of the nasal cavity right after releasing the abdominal lock of Udhijana Banda and just before you begin to breathe in again. In any case, 
I want you to know that pressing your tongue against the roof of the nasal cavity is a more advanced stage of Kachari Mudra. And if you have just achieved Kachari Mudra and cannot press your tongue this high up quite yet in the nasal cavity, then just keep your tongue as far up in the nasal cavity as you currently can when doing Mahabandha. I can also add that if you are curious about advanced stages of Gachari Mudra, I will in fact cover this topic extensively in a future video. The regular way to sit while performing Mahabandha is in Siddhasana, as I demonstrated earlier. However, you could also perform Mahabandha while sitting in Padmasana, but you should only do this after you have at least slightly accustom yourself to contracting the perineal body of the perineum and are no longer that dependent on the added stimulation from the heel pressing against this area. Either way, here is a demonstration of Mahabandha while sitting in Padmasana. You can learn to sit in Padmasana by watching my video on this topic by clicking up here. Let me now talk a little more about the knots or grantis. I can reveal that dissolving them completely could take weeks or even just days with considerably rigorous practice of Mahabandha, but usually it would take some months, and in some cases, years. You might wonder how to know when the knots have been dissolved. Well, sometimes you will feel it as if a pressure has been released, or that a weight has been lifted in the region of the dissolved knot. However, often the knots are just dissolved over a long period of time, in such small increments, that you are not consciously aware of it happening, but instead you just realize, after the passing of some time, that you have much more energy, both physically and spiritually, as compared to when you first began practicing Mahabandha, which is a sign that the knots have indeed been dissolved. I can say that when first beginning to learn Mahabandha, you should perform it for just a few times during your meditation session. But later on in your practice, when your body has become more used to it, you can perform Mahabandha for as many times as you like during your meditation session. Just breathe in slowly after you have performed it once. Then hold your breath inside for a little while. Before breathing out completely and performing Mahabandha once again. You can actually repeat this process over and over again for the whole duration of your meditation session if you like. And if you at some point feel in need of more air, you can just take a few deep breaths and then continuing the process again. When you do Mahabandha continuously in this manner, you should combine it with deep breathing. And you could even at times combine it also with Ujjayi Pranayama. You can watch my video on Ujjayi and deep breathing to learn how to do them by clicking up here.
Now the breath holding of Mahabanda is in the beginning more of a conscious effort, Bahya Kumbhaka. But later in your practice, it could spontaneously transition into a breathless state, Kevala Kumbhaka. And then you no longer need to apply any effort in the holding of your breath. Do not be alarmed if this happens and just enjoy this deeply profound meditative state for as long as it lasts. In future videos I will build on to Mahabanda by adding other yogic practices to perform in combination with it. Because after you have dissolved the knots, there are still important uses for Mahabanda and you should just continue to perform it, even after all the knots have been dissolved. But more of this in future videos. In future videos, I will also teach you the yogic practices for awakening Kundalini, which are to be performed after the knots have been dissolved. To not miss any of these future videos, remember to subscribe and click the notify button to be informed when I upload new videos. Also remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and if you should have any questions, I would be glad to answer them in the comment section below this video. Thanks for watching.